The Last Wave just released on the Nintendo Switch and this, it's a game I've been incredibly excited for ever since I tested out the demo during Steam Next Fest. Now the game, it's a gothic styled metroidvania that borrows heavily from the world of souls, but my big question was, how does it perform on the Switch? And that is exactly what we're going to be looking at today. Now you may be asking why am I doing a video like this? Well I've seen reviews go live but they all seem to be on other platforms which had me wondering if something was up. Let's get into it. My name's Alex, this is Switch Corner, and if you do enjoy this video, subscribe, it helps us out a huge amount. Alongside the performance today, then I will be giving you a decent little overview of what it's all about, and also my impressions after the first couple of hours. The story is simple, you play as Eric, a character that awakens in this world with no recollection of his past. Now soon, we learn we are cursed, and in a race against time as our mind and body is deteriorating. This is our mission, get into this world, get salvation from this affliction, and along the way meet the cast of characters who will further build upon the world and even present you with the occasional side mission. I've enjoyed the opening overall and having characters scattered around that are friendly it definitely brings the location to life. It also appears to be fully voice acted, which is impressive as I've enjoyed the performances this far as well. So gameplay and as I said, a gothic 2D metroidvania that borrows from the world of souls and it's here promising a brutal journey ahead. While I wouldn't say it's been overly difficult so far, it's easy to see how swiftly some of these enemies could kill you with the amount of health lost in a single blow. The messaging seems to be master the dodge roll ASAP as it provides brief invincibility frames and practice the parry technique. Now I have died once and that was to the first boss. I was able to overcome him the second attempt but he was a quick reminder that charging in won't serve you well in this world. There's definitely got to be an element of strategy. It is that combat though that's impressing me the most so far. I've already found multiple weapons. You get a secondary attack, in my case the pistol, and there's even a special move that's activated with a trigger pull and face button combination. But do be warned, that special move, that one actually whittles down your stamina meter. The movement, the standard attacks, they have no impact. That's definitely a combination I do like. I also like the fact the gun has a different bullets, and there's also a ton of items to uncover that can both buffer our lead, heal him, or even deliver some damage. What caught me off guard is just how little hand holding this one does. This is for those that have experience with the genre. It's non-linear exploration and the game has given next to no guidance this far. In most ways I do see that as a positive. It's a genre that rewards curiosity and there's one element of this I particularly like and that is on loading into a new game it presents four fighting styles all with pictures. Here stats and attributes are different from build to build meaning you can very much play the way you want to. We will also then be leveling this with progression. The main ones we do impact are vitality, strength, dexterity, mind and instinct. Now dependent on where you donate skill points these will then go on to impact our strength and resistance. Now this it can only be done when you meet certain characters in this world and it's not something you would do at a single checkpoint. Thankfully however the last faith immediately introduces fast travel which is seriously appreciated because you nearly always have quick access to these options. Then when it comes to the map, it really gives you very little, honestly. So far, it's been me reading the map to understand where I haven't been yet. But thankfully, they know what makes a good map system. And that is the ability to drop your own waypoints. And there's also a variety of them. So you can note a weapon location or let's say a door you can't unlock. It's clear many of the dead ends simply require a skill I am yet to acquire. For example, I've seen plenty of locations that appear to be for a grapple hook to pull me up. And there's also objects I'm not yet strong enough to move. The location itself then it varies quickly it's got everything you would expect platforming challenges secret paths to unlock plenty of branching pathways and more than a few enemies i'm not a fan of the spikes that kill you instantly that do feature here however like souls should you fall in battle you can go ahead and collect your items back or in this game it's actually just the currency nicrux which is used at stores for items and for leveling up I've definitely ventured into a few areas so far though that I'm not leveled up for, but it seems to have a really good grasp on what makes the genre so entertaining and it's not here necessarily to appeal to the newcomer, rather it feels like a metroidvania made by fans of metroidvanias. 
I also want to highlight the game's settings, and there's not a huge amount on offer here, but one stood out to me which was incredibly important, and that is, if you jump into the gameplay menu, you can actually switch the movement from joystick to d-pad, which is something I was thankful to see. I just prefer that when it comes to this style of experience. Additionally, the d-pad acts as a quick access to items, so in this case, when you make the switch, it switches all of those commands to the joystick, so it's definitely well implemented. Unfortunately, however, it does have its noticeable problems in the first few hours, and this is where we're going to get to performance and a few other issues I noted. Now, I do want to be clear again, I'm just a few hours in, and reviews have dropped if you do want to check them out. Right now, I'm seeing an average of right around a 7 out of 10. But what am I seeing? Well, first off, while the game stylistically feels modern, the systems feel old school, you know, the menus, and while that's fine for the equipment setup and the inventory, the map could do with a little more detail. I just find it difficult to make out where some areas connect. Additionally, this screen is incredibly laggy with a noticeable delay for movements. Then there's just a couple of quirks as well. There's a text in the lower right of the screen that seems to advise where you are and the name, but it looks like something more for the devs that could be hidden for this final release. They also then had a conversation with one gent in this world who offered up an item, but it appeared behind the character sprites featured in the conversation. That is, of course, a small thing, and I could find the information in my inventory. But yeah, I'm sure it could reappear throughout this journey, and it should be a relatively simple patch. My final, I guess, quirk is more controller related then, and that is when you want to interact with something, you use the X button, and unfortunately, it can be a little bit finicky in regards to where you position your character to start an interaction or let's say a conversation. They could do with maybe widening out that hitbox just for these moments, just to make it a little bit more forgiving, because right now I did find I was kind of shuffling all over the place. Also, the text in the game, there's no options here for display, and this is gonna prove a little difficult when it comes to handle play because there's definitely some small text and locations in here. Then the big one frame rate, and this goes all over the place, as you transition from room to room, shall we call it, it's targeting 60 and in a few small areas so far, it has reached that, but in areas where enemies populate the landscape, you're going to be right around 30, dropping as low as 20. It seems here attacks in particular hurt the frame rate with each strike, and then the reaction of the sprites seem to drop it even further. Now I'm not going to say it's not playable, because you will see me getting through these encounters, but my concern is, as the challenge ramps up, I'm going to need to further master things like the parry for counters, and that's going to prove increasingly challenging and no doubt frustrating when the input response speed starts to show signs. I've actually already noticed a few times that it doesn't feel quite as responsive as I would like it to be. Now, I captured quite a lot of footage for the frame rate, so I'll be leaving that playing in the background while I do give this game now just one last compliment because it absolutely deserves it. And that compliment is the visuals and the audio are stunning. I've already spoken to the high quality voice acting, but they've done a fantastic job of adding in creepy environmental effects and then visually, the pixel work is stunning. It's clear there's a Castlevania inspiration, but these characters just look incredible with clear shadow work and a huge amount of animation. It just adds so much personality. The same can be said of the world as well. It's changing frequently as I move from location to location. And even with the grim color palette, it's really easy to find the creativity in these locations. So overall on launch, as I suspected, there's a reason we haven't seen any Nintendo Switch related reviews, and that is it is far from the best version of the game. While I think the visuals and the audio are stunning and the story is intriguing, you will be battling against a frame rate that may test your patience. Again, you could get through this, but I imagine it's going to make an already difficult game more difficult. Hopefully they can patch it up in the near future, but here I think stability is the key as always, so if that means locking things out at 30, then so be it. What do you all think though? Are you still going to be jumping in? Transparently, it's definitely calling me. I know I will be returning. I'm just not sure if I'll maybe pick it up on something else as well, even if I did already part with $30 of my cash for this build. So with that, let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. And if you did enjoy this video, subscribe. It helps out the channel a huge amount. Thanks, everyone.